All right, so this starts day four of the Crush 100 challenge where I practice like a pro for 100 days, but not 100 days in a row. So this is day four. I practiced some between days three and days four, but it wasn't enough to really count it like, you know, a Crush 100 day. So today truly will be a full Crush 100 day. It's 7.30 in the morning and the Golf Performance Lab opens at eight. So I'll get there right when it opens in downtown Los Angeles. So. I'm going to work from there from 8 a.m. till about 11.30 uh, on my swing, so three and a half hours or so. So the focus for the swing work uh, today is going to be, I wanna go back to basics a little bit. Uh, I found, when I first started doing this challenge, one of the things that motivated me to do it was talking to Jay Keel from Golf Stick Pro and I was hitting the ball so good out there with leg tension and stuff and basically the same distance, on, well, a little less, like about 15% less with this like super, super short swing. Call it like the functional swing plane swing. So basically when you, you only take it, you feel like you're only taking it back like to like a belt high on the back of the swing and follow through. I was hitting it so good that way. But uh, it didn't really translate to when you hit a full swing. Then I went through the, on day one, I went through the shank so bad that I, I actually, as difficult as that was, I learned a lot from it. When I tilt too much, or when, excuse me, when I turn too much early, then I, uh, then I'm like totally super deep and stuck late in my backswing. So really what I need to do is have a backswing that feels like almost all setting and tilting and almost no turning and so Paul and I for through the work that I did with him really hard on day two uh, figured out like a real good strategy to be able to exaggerate it which is good because during the nightmare of day one I was not even able to exaggerate what I wanted to do and uh, I was like man the only way I can see a way forward with this is if I can at least exaggerate it F figure out how to do that on day two by basically uh, setting the arms without turning and then doing kind of like a deep turn and a hit. And the turn basically doesn't happen until the transition. Now yesterday when I was th there training for like an hour and a half at the Golf Performance Lab, found this, it's not even like a P2 freezer, it's more of like a, a P1.5 uh, freezer where uh, I just kind of set the club out, like mostly through the takeaway, and then uh, and then start from there. And basically that just feels like I got the, the arm stretched out here and go up and down and hit it good. So today what I want to do is I want to find out a way how to do Paul what Paul was doing and what Paul was doing in that exaggeration, but do it uh, from a shorter top backswing position, a much shorter top backswing position, much wider. And uh, I think that is actually gonna go from becoming my drill swing to becoming my real swing. Also too, I mean, to throw another thing in the mix, yesterday I did some speed work just to see like what my ball speed would be. And that machine is like, it's probably real, but it is a slow machine, but I was only able to get to 156. Last week on a Foresight machine at the golf store using a different driver, not my, not my driver or my new driver, but a uh, TaylorMade Sim Max 2. I was able to get 167, yeah, 167, and average about 162. So I'm, you know, I'm not sure if the the new nunchuck driver that I'm using with the M4 head, it might. I know that it is cut down quite a bit to make sure that it goes straight, but um, it goes against something that we did a video about. But but uh, power is definitely not my focus here. My focus is getting leg tension and getting a proper impact. That's the whole focus of this challenge. Even just as much as shooting better scores or anything, um, getting a proper impact, I think, is a, a prereq prerequisite for um, becoming the type of golfer that I want to be and really flipping that switch. All right, I'll update you once I'm at Golf Performance Lab in LA. All right, little update here. I've been working for about, only about 30 minutes or so and let's just do a swing update 
because I'm trying to blend the drill to my real swing. This was a, a pretty good one. Where from here to here, I felt like I really wasn't turning very much. And then there, I start turning. So let's just go through the swing. I don't have to talk about it. So no turn, then I do a big turn and go through the ball and do an impact check as I always do. Right side of your screen. Impact was good. So that was a, a, a bit of a lag impact, so that was good. Um, you can see up in the hands here, left side. That's pretty darn good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change that too much. Let's take away. So that's the main thing. If I can get this, the loop of the hands going more this way than this way, rather than this way than that way, you know? That's what I want, and that time I did it pretty good. If I go to one of my early swings here from today, you can see, see how the hands are here, and then they're going that way. Here, and then going that way. So even though this was, you know, decent strike, that's not the loop that's gonna get me to success. And the reason, I'm not doing this for aesthetic reasons. I'm doing this because, look, um, oh, actually, that, that was kind of a short swing. Yeah, we got into a great impact there. So that's good. If I can start to have the impact be the given. So that's what I'm working on here right now. I'll be here for another probably two hours or so. Two and a half hours, actually. Okay, so I've been here for like an hour. Okay, so the, so the whole Crush 100 challenge really started in my mind when I met with Jay Keel out in the desert and I was hitting those short shots so good. So here's one of those short ones. So let's go just through this swing for a second because this felt extremely short. And what, what I wanted, I want to match feeling real because that feels really short and like, like a chip shot swing. But if I go, if I watch that, this is what I wanted to see. And I go over here, get this out of the way go that's 154 yards to carry and i know from hitting here normally like 168 so that's 14 yards short of my regular swing but i want to see and because it's look how good impact gets when you get whoops that is that is the wiggly line look how good impact gets at that slower speed. So I wanna to try to do, one of the things I think that's happening at the slower speed is my pelvis is working more correct. So we see a little bit of butt on the back side of that line. And you see it gets deeper there in transition. And then it comes in once I unload it. So that's something I could do a little better, but the loop of the hands is not super perfect. We're gonna, we're going to keep improving that. But I think that's really the key forward is two things is getting, what are we gonna do? getting this loop to go not this way to this way. Okay. I think the two key things are getting the loop to go this way to this way and attack the ball. And then the shorter backswing feeling and more more loaded and reversing my energy back that way earlier because then whenever I get the the backswing shorter I get a better impact possibly some left leg stuff too so that's what I'm gonna do it like all day today just the short swings and then try to pressurize it you know to full distance from that short swing all right this last one was a good one because I just wanted to show you. I felt like I was gonna take a shortest backswing, but like kind of like in with Dan Martin stuff with Swing Pro, I felt like I was gonna do nothing at the top with the hands. So I really felt like I was gonna go up. And then here, I was felt like I was gonna do nothing with the hands as far as hands, you know? 
and I hit that one really good. That felt like like a really short backswing, but it went on, it went 159 carry, which is close to full. It's eight yards short of full, so I think I'm onto something there in the transition. Do nothing with the hands. The loop's the wrong way, so if I can take it a little more. So do stuff with the arms, maybe, but nothing with the hands at all. All right, I'm making some good swings now. Here, I'm still feeling like I, I, I know now that I need to do a lot less with my hands than I think I have to do. Here, I was really trying to exaggerate the turn. So here, I'm feeling like I'm not turning at all, and then I turn and hit it. And you can see the loop gets a lot better. I haven't checked the impact yet, but uh, from the flight of it, it was good. It was like really just a dead straight shot up this side here. So let's check the, so for there, I really feel like I'm going like straight down the target line with my hands on the backswing. And then, so I feel like my hands are like about here before I start turning. I feel like my hands are like out here and then I start turning them back and going this way. So let's see, up, so it really feels like left chest and then it gets deep. You can see as exaggerated as that feel felt, it wasn't very crazy. All right, so that was a positive practice session there. I made some swings that were really on a good plane and did what I want. I had to feel pretty exaggerated to do it, but I was able to do it. And not only was I able to do it, but it wasn't like a drill swing. They were like actual swings. So that was good. So some really hardcore technical work. And then my friend Chris came by to check out the facility and hit some balls. And then we hit some balls together. And then I started doing some speed work. Chris is uh, can hit it pretty long. He got some hot ball speeds. So he got like 168 on the machine, which is tough to do. Like a foresight inside, I've noticed is it's tough to get a, a hot speed on that. So when you're seeing Bryson do like 200 miles an hour inside, it is really crazy. But um, I was able to get 163, which was good because it showed me that uh, I've got a little ways to go with that. But um, the swings that I made that were 163 felt really, really great. So that was good. Now the day's not over. I'm gonna eat lunch and then. I'm gonna go be playing golf with uh, my friend Boris, with my teacher, my swing coach, Paul Young, and then with Nick Cantley, Patrick Cantley's brother, who's also a professional golfer. So that should be fun. All right, so that wraps up day four of the Be Better Golf Crush 100 Challenge. Uh, playing golf didn't go as well as the training went today. I really didn't hit any shots that I would really, really loved. And I hit a lot of pools, which is my miss. Um, I did hit some good drives and the short game was, was pretty sharp for bad conditions at the course, short game was. So, and then I learned a lot from watching Nick uh, Canley play, who's really good. And uh, watching Boris do some like wedge stuff that is beyond my ability. So like see, seeing that was really cool. And then working on, on the course gave me a good idea of like, okay, I think this first step is being able to do it like in a drill. The second step is being able to do it and practice in a full swing. And then the next step will be, be being able to do it um, on the course. So that's the, that's the next step, but I really, really want to nail it in training. So I have another, I'm playing again in the morning at Trump National with the team, and then um, gonna do some training tomorrow night as well. So, gotta keep it going, and you gotta keep the pedal down to the metal and the intensity up. <laughs>